I've always heard this thing. You've got to love you. We've all heard, you know, we've, we've seen the platitudes. We've seen it all over Instagram and stuff like this. You're like, love yourself before you can love anyone else. I'm like, okay, sure. There's something that you wrote about this that when I read it, I was just like, oh, wow. With your permission, I'll, I'll, I'll read a, a couple of lines. Here's what I read. Very few individuals are naturally convinced of their inherent worthiness. In fact, in Buddhist thought, to possess such conviction is considered a corollary of full enlightenment. It's more likely that we are caught in cycles of self-denigration and self-aggrandizement, both of which are forms of aggression. We, hold, we are so hard on ourselves, so unremittingly unkind in the way we consider ourselves the opposite, insisting that we are in fact awesome, is simply the flip side of that thought pattern. When it comes to love, this unkindness to self begins to mix with the relationship. As you become emotionally intertwined, the energetic space between you begins to close up. As it tightens, your ability to see your partner as separate from your own mind stream diminishes. The closer you get, the less able you are to actually see each other. What happens at this point is that because you cannot discern who is who, you begin to treat your beloved the way you treat your own mind. The kindness or unkindness you extend towards them is a reflection of the way you treat yourself. Generosity of spirit, so powerful in the early stages of a relationship, begins to contract. Tell me more about this, because I, I think so many people will, will sort of like hear that and be like, Oh. Well, thank you so much for reading it. It made me feel so happy to hear you read it. it thank you so much. So it's always been kind of curious, why does it become harder to love this other person the longer we know each other? And it's this is not my, I did not make this up. This is a teaching of the Bodhisattva path, the awakened being path. This is a classical Buddhist teaching. And it also gives dimension to the cliche, which also happens to be true, that in order to love someone else, you have to love yourself. Which I always thought meant, oh, I have to like myself, or I have to think I'm awesome, and my self-esteem has to be perfect, and then I'll be able But that's not what it means. It means that your self-talk and the way you actually think of yourself could be riddled with gentleness and acceptance and spaciousness, as opposed to, I'm an awesome person, which is very constricting. I'm an awesome person sometimes, and I'm also a crazy person other times, and a cruel person, and a beautiful person, and silly. To make room for all of that, to hold that in a kind of gentle space with complete authenticity and accuracy is what is meant, I think, by self-love. And that when you can do that for yourself, bring this spaciousness and this courage and gentleness, then you can do it for someone else. But until then, you know, these weird neurotic, I guess you'd say, mind streams just mix and wreak havoc. I think this landed so powerfully for me because the visual of, as you get deeper into the relationship, the space between the two of you closing and closing and closing and closing until essentially you know, like there's no space anymore. And whatever feelings you held just and applied to you now without space between the two people becomes the feeling that you apply to the relationship and to that other person. Well, if you're torturing yourself and demeaning and diminishing yourself every day, and now you've reached a depth of relationship, a, a length of time where now you effectively, there is no space between you, and you start to feel that, that starts to translate into them, then how could that not be toxic? For the first time, I was like, with that description, I, I really better understood why doing that work yourself is so important to your ability to truly see the kindness and generosity and love in that other person. 